y'all, you already know we out here putting in the air video shoot. Put one in the air, we out here. It's Calabas. I don't know. No, no. I don't Marilla? know where we are. Somewhere around there. Uh -huh. out here. And he came. Bro, why? I thought I texted you. And, yeah, we're trying to get to the bottom of Yung still. Um, he, he has some really, really cool, I guess, algorithms. And I'm trying to download his algorithms. And like some of his algorithms are really sophisticated, and it's it's it takes some time to understand to like parse through his functions and like understand his logic and his reasoning processes. So try like that to map who you are, even by watching your eyes. They're, they're trying to figure out who you are so they can send you the right information, but the danger is that that'll happen, say, in the domain of news and broader information, increasing this tendency for people to be siloed in their exposure to the external world. It's a big it's sort of like each of us is becoming a micro-celebrity surrounded by electronic sycophants who do nothing but tell us exactly what we want to hear. It's a real problem. Karl Popper, a famous philosopher of science, said that one of the things that you should do, and this is akin to the agenda of people, is you should always look for information that contradicts your current viewpoint. Now that's painful, right? Because who wants their axioms contradicted? It can take you apart. But it's the only way that you can ensure that you're learning at the same time that you're maintaining your stability. And that's another reason why it's really necessary to engage in dialogue with people that you do not agree with. Because they're the ones who will tell you things that you don't know. It's, cru it's of crucial importance in the maintenance of your own stability. All right, gainers, we were first on the scene, so we're going to pull up. And we're gonna read a little bit. Put one in the air, put one in the air. You'll see me crying, all of them tears. All of them tears lately. I just need you right here. I need you right there. Don't make me move on, cause I'll be right there. Yeah. It's funny because without being on camera, it's always easy to tell other people. Like, Yo, all you have to do is do it like this, do it like that. You know yeah, yeah. And then as soon as I get on camera, I'll just. What do I do with my head? <laughs> Alright, guys, so this is going to be like the main shot right here, and then we'll go in and it'll go from there. We oh baby please and if you stay I promise I will be your everything the show me and I understand Judicial and super and superstitious, and fair enough. But there's something else going on there that's more important, and that's the observation. And this is at a deep level again. The observation that rationality has one big problem. So it, it's it can easily become arrogant and believe in its own theories. So if you're smart, there's going to be some of you people who are like that too. Some of you, your primary the primary trait that distinguished you from other people over the course of your whole life was that you were more intelligent than most. And you may have staked your identity on that and, and overvalue intelligence and rationality. And the problem with that is that you, you make a theory of the world and then you tend to assume that it's 100% correct. That's the tendency to fall in love with your own theories. And that's what a totalitarian does. A totalitarian says, here's the damn theory and it's exactly right and you're going to act it out exactly. And if you don't, well, we've got some special treats in mind for you. One of the most terrible things that, that I encountered while reading about totalitarianism, and this was.